Welcome to Law of Attraction for You channel. Always subscribe to Law of Attraction for You channel for see newest books about Law of Attraction. This video we will bring you book, I'm rich beyond my wildest dreams, I am. I am. I am. How to get everything you want in life, by Thomas L. Polly, Penelope J. Polly. Let's go. Preface. The Big Secret. Yes, there is a big secret to getting everything you want in life. It's simple. You've undoubtedly heard it before. And you probably take it for granted. It isn't the whole story, but it is essential to creating a rich, happy and healthy life. It is a universal law. Which means it is invested with a power and might that can take you anywhere you want to go. Ask and you shall receive. Humankind has known this law for thousands of years. Yet strangely enough, only a small percentage of the population has ever learned how to use it in their personal and professional lives. How often have you wanted more from life but not known how to get it? Well, now you can have everything you want. We'll show you how. You can live the life you dream. In this book we show you exactly how to ask so that you may receive everything. We show you how to get the things you want in your life, and how to eliminate the things you do not want. This book will show you how you, too, can get rich beyond your wildest dreams. Introduction. How rich is rich? At this writing, I drive a big, beautiful, black Mercedes-Benz S-Class. It had only 55,000 miles when I bought it. It was in perfect condition, including the golden leather upholstery. I paid $12,000 less than book value. My wife drives a very sharp Volvo station wagon in excellent condition, white with gold leather upholstery. I bought it for nothing down and $5,000 below book value. My three children each drive great cars, all of which we have pure chased in the past two years. Two new VW Jettas, and a brand new VW Golf. I live in a two-story, five-bedroom, three-bath executive home with a swimming pool and hot tub. We are less than five minutes from one of the finest beaches in the world. We have all new furniture, new carpets, new pots and pans, the mirror finish kind that drives the cleaning lady nuts, new china, new flatware and plenty of new clothes to fit our new, slimmer, trimmer bodies. We are healthier and happier than we have ever been. I have money in the bank. I weigh 20 pounds less than I did three months ago. If I want something, I get it. I have a gold card with a major credit limit. We travel frequently. We eat out all the time. Every weekend we go shopping for some new thing that will enrich our lives. My spiritual life is at an all-time high. I give more every month to spiritual works than I used to give in a couple of years. I feel good about myself and my fellow humans. I have stopped yelling at other drivers, well, most of the time. And I am even learning to love my enemies. Best of all, according to my wife, I seldom snore anymore. Diane and I have been married forever. We have gone through a great deal together, as have our children. Yes, we consider ourselves rich. But then so do those who used to think of us as their poor friends. It is hard even for me to believe that less than six years ago I declared bankruptcy for the second time. My family was evicted from our home. The four drivers in our family shared two junkie cars, neither of which could be trusted to make it to the post office and back on a regular basis. But now, I am rich. How rich is rich? There are many people who make far more money than I do, right now. Think about Bill Gates, Steven Spielberg. Shaquille O'Neal or the guy who owns the dealership where I bought my car. They, undoubtedly, have more money and more things than I do. I am happy for them. They are doing great. I hope they get richer. I certainly intend to get richer. Rich is not having more money. Rich is knowing the secret to getting everything you want in life. I am rich because I've learned the secret. The secret that was right under my nose my whole life. A secret as old as Abraham and as powerful and full of possibility as a newborn child. A secret that came to me on the wings of power and might, sent from the heavens above. 
A secret that made me rich beyond my wildest dreams. Notice. Official religious disclaimer. Oh, first I must interject my basic religious disclaimer. I believe there is only one God and that all religions come from God. That God is the beginning and the end and all that leath between. I believe God is the unknowable essence from which all things come. The sustainer, the healer, the incomparable. I believe he sent many messengers, each a new chapter in one continuous revelation of God. I accept all religions as true. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe Moses is the friend of God. I believe Muhammad is the apostle of God. I believe that Baha'u'llah is the glory of God. I believe in Abraham, Krishna, Buddha, Zoroaster, and the Bab. I believe that all the men and women on this earth, regardless of race, nationality or creed are one big family, one people, one universal consciousness. So if you do not believe as I do, great. You have the right to believe whatever you want. It will not change the secrets I have for you. It will not harm, hurt or diminish the power or the effectiveness of the exercises I give you. This book is not about religion. Your relationship with your creator is your business. You can call this omniscient, all-pervasive, omnipresent reality whatever you want. Call it a force, nature, the universe, the great spirit, creation, God she. We're only talking semantics. But know this of a certainty, we are not alone in this life. There is a force out there far greater than anything we can ever comprehend. It is this universal force that gives us everything. It is this creative force that has made who mankind rich beyond its wildest dreams. And it is this force to which we turn for our own prosperity. If I say God and you say Yahweh, or if I say angels and you say spirits or guides, who cares? Maybe we'll have coffee together in St. Moritz and talk about it sometime. Watch the sun rise over the Alps on a clear, crisp July morning. Smell the French pastry. Taste the sweet cheeses, share the good times. Until then, let's get rich together. Forget our differences and make the most of what we have. Chapter 1. Hawks on the Beach. This is a remarkably short book considering the gift it holds. Yes, I will tell you the secret. You will have the opportunity to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. But first I must set the scene. To do less would be like you giving your lover a precious stone without the setting. A loose diamond is a valuable investment, but a diamond ring is a gift you'll cherish for life. Come with me, then, to one of Southern California's least known and most intimate beaches. It is a good walk from the car down the path cut deep into the steep cliffs that protect the narrow stretch of sand and tide pools. It was here, only a mile from Seal Island that my story begins. Or, at least, so I originally thought. My wife, 15-year-old daughter and I were spending the day with my daughter's best friend and her parents. We'd known each other for a few years, but this was kind of a first date. You know, hang at the beach, enjoy the day and find out what we have in common. Shortly after spreading our blankets and pouring on the sunscreen, I got into a conversation with Lisa, the best friend's stepmother. Lisa was into alternative thinking, most of which seemed a little far out to me, but then she said, did you know that the Indians in this area believed that hawks were messengers of the great spirit and that if a hawk landed near you it meant that God had a message for you? I had just finished writing a video script for a major oil company's annual dealer meeting using that very concept as a central theme. I was ready to expound on my own knowledge of Native American lore when something happened pinhead that silenced us all. Out of nowhere, a hawk soared down from the heavens, circled twice above our heads and landed right next to me. No one said anything for the longest time. It was more than strange, and the coincidence was unsettling to say the least. This hawk was within maybe 10 feet of me. Way out of character. Hawks are very careful to keep a good distance from possible danger. I grew up on a farm, and I have never seen a hawk land on the ground, let alone within a few feet of a human. Yet I could almost reach out and touch this one. Finally, 
Lisa announced what everyone was thinking. Well, Tom, it looks like God has a message for you. I shook my head and negated the whole weird scene with some inane joke. The hawk stayed a while longer before taking off and disappearing back into the heavens. I was quick to make sure everyone knew I didn't really believe in superstition. Then Bob said, one man's superstition is another man's insight. We all laughed and Lisa added, good thing it was only one hawk. The Indians also believed that if the hawk brought his mate to meet you, that meant the MES sage from God was very important. These words had no sooner left my friend's mouth when our friendly hawk reappeared from above circled and landed again next to me, this time with his mate. Okay, to this day, I still do not know what to make of all this. I do not believe in superstition, yet two incredible coincidences are equally hard to swallow. Maybe it was pure coincidence. Maybe it was God's way of getting my at and tea on. I do not know. But whatever the source of this remarkable play of nature, it did get my attention and it did set the scene for a meeting that night that would change the direction of my life. This strange and seemingly insignificant visit from two hawks did, in fact, began a journey so dramatic and so impacting that it eventually led us to a life which we could never have imagined, a life rich beyond our wildest dreams. Chapter 2. Accepting Your Own Good. Strange as it may seem, one of the most difficult steps in getting rich beyond your wildest dreams is accepting your own good. Actually allowing yourself to receive the good you are due. Most people do not expect to receive good. You have been conditioned by your perception of the events that make up your life to believe that the other shoe is going to fall at any minute. That you are not worthy of getting what you really want. That you are destined to struggle and suffer in this life. You may pray for help. You may work your fingers to the bone. You may ask for prosperity and desire the good of this world, but in the end you are not really ready to receive the gifts God sends. You have shut yourself off from the generosity of creation. Your good is waiting for you now. Please open the door and let it in. God meant for us to be rich. In every holy book there are verses that attest to our wealth. Baha'u'llah said it beautifully, I created thee rich, why dost thou bring thyself down to poverty? Accepting your own good is essential to realizing the high estate the universe has set for you. If you refuse the good you are offered, you are refusing God and you are denying yourself that which you desire most. Not a good idea if you want to get rich. There is the old, 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 I think I heard it in high school 200 years ago, story about the man caught in the flood. Surrounded by water and sitting on his front porch, the man is approached by a rescue worker in a boat. The would-be rescuer tells the man to get in the boat because the river is still rising. The man, devoutly religious, says, no thank you, my lord will protect me. And the boat leaves without him. Two hours later, the man has moved to the second story of his house, since the first story is now underwater. This time a sheriff's deputy steers his boat up next to the wind dow and tells the man to get in his boat because the river is still rising. Again the man refuses, saying, no thank you, my lord will protect me. And the deputy is forced to leave without him. An hour later, the man has moved to the roof of his house when a helicopter flies over and drops a ladder for the man. Once again the man refuses, yelling up to the pie lot, no thank you my lord will protect me. And the chopper leaves him to die. The man does die and goes to heaven. There, he is granted a brief conversation with God. Immediately the man says, Dear Lord, I have been a faithful servant all my life. I have always turned to you and you alone. God nods his agreement, saying, Yes, this is true. Why then, the man continues, Did you leave me to die in that terrible flood? God shakes his head and says, I didn't mean for you to die. In fact, I sent two boats and a helicopter. What more did you want? Accepting our own good is the first step to prosperity. Unless you accept the good you are given, nothing can come to you. If someone offers to buy you lunch or give you free tickets to a ball game you want to see, 
you must accept this gift. To refuse hurts both you and the giver. You are denied your gift. The giver is denied the bounty of giving. What's more, if you refuse to accept someone's gift, you are refusing God. Now, this leads to the first law of prose parity, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. We need to go back to that sandy beach in sunny Southern California. There's someone I want you to meet. The person who showed me the doors to my prosperity. The person who taught me how to become rich beyond my wildest dreams. Chapter 3. Enter Marilyn. After putting the hawks out of mind we, Diane, Heather, Bob, Lisa, Brooke and I, spent a great day playing in the cool surf and working up a healthy appetite. We had so much fun together, notwithstanding the visit from our fine feathered friends, that we all decided to go to Bob and Lisa's and grill hamburgers. Naturally, we were tired and a bit sunburned. Whoever remembers to use a second coat of sunscreen? While we were cooking, Bob decided we needed to meet their neighbor, somebody we would just love. I said, no. I'm tired and hot and cranky and I do not want to make small talk with a sweet little old lady from Illinois who probably thinks Harry Truman is still vice president. I did not meet new people all that well back then. Bob smiled and said, Marilyn's very connected. You'll like her, and he called her anyway. I couldn't imagine what or who this woman was connected to. Hollywood, the local AARP, a very long extension cord. Fortunately, she said she was not feeling well and could not come over. I was relieved and totally disarmed when, 10 minutes later, the back door opened and in walked this strong, V. Brandt woman in her 60s full of good cheer and shocking blonde hair. The instant our eyes met the hairs on the back of my neck stood straight up. The electricity in the room was so thick I could feel it crackling on my skin. Marilyn immediately walked over behind me, grabbed my shoulders and said, I tried not coming, then I got a message that I needed to meet you, because I think I have information for you. I was not ready for any of this. The hawks, the message, the high voltage connection, none of it. But this is California, land of fruits and nuts, so I did the politically correct thing. I smiled a lot and agreed with everybody, biding my time until I could run away. Seriously, my first meeting with Marilyn was so strangely powerful that I decided to make it my business to avoid this wonderful woman for as long as humanly posy ble. After years of struggling from one thing to another, I had finally developed a small commercial writing boosy ness which I called an ad agency. I wrote and created brochures, videos and sundry marketing materials for, boss sickly, one client. This paid the bills more or less. Considerably less than more, actually. My bankruptcy was recently discharged, and I did not need this kind of complication in my life. Marilyn told me she was a prosperity teacher and that she had helped many people get the things they wanted in life. She even told me she felt strongly that she had a SPECL message for me, something I've never heard her say to anyone else since. When I asked what the message was, she told me she'd be glad to meet with me, but I had to call for an appointment. She didn't have her calendar with her. She gave me her card. There it was. Marilyn had my message. The Hawks had prepared me to receive it. They'd been quite clear. First one, then two Hawks landing practically within arm's reach. Clearly, the universe had an important message for me. And then, like the Hawks, out of nowhere comes this blonde lightning bolt telling me she's the bearer of an I am important message. Just for me. Who could refuse such a draw modic call to action? Maybe I was overly cautious. I don't know. Maybe I needed more time to think. Maybe I couldn't handle the truth. Who really knows these things for sure? I do know she told me I had to call for an appointment, which, to my business ears, meant she was serious about her work. I know all too well that free advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. I expect to be paid for my ESSER vices. And in return I expect to pay when I receive a service. Marilyn told me later that this was the law of compensation. Since I decided there was a cost involved, I dismissed the whole thing by saying to myself, 
I can't afford it right now. An expensive and painful decision as it turned out. Still, I was attracted to Marilyn's spirit. She was honest and straightforward, and behind those blue eyes I sensed a real wisdom and an exceptional talent. She had a strength that transcended anyone I'd ever met. Part of me wanted to get to know her, but I was still smarting from the bankruptcy. I wanted to keep my life simple and uncomplicated. If I knew anything about this woman, I knew she was unconventional and good at it. I went home that night without my message. I told myself it was because I did not want to spend any money. But I think the truth is I was afraid. I felt Marilyn's personal power, and I was afraid. I was prepared by our friendly hawks to receive a MES sage, a very important message. The whole day seemed orchestrated to this finale. Yet I turned down this gift. And I paid the price of refusing a gift from God. Know this. I refused the gift God offered me and headed off in the wrong direction. Soon, my business took what seemed like a left turn into a brick wall. Oh, if I'd only known then what I know now. First law of prosperity. All your good comes from God. Contrary to popular belief, your good does not come from you or your own hard work. It does not come from your boss or your client or your spouse or the general public. It does not come from luck or gambling or even Aunt Carol's will. Your good comes from one source and one source only, God. Do you think you can work hard enough to achieve in a lifetime what the universe can give you in an instant? It is not possible. God is the life giver, the sustainer, the prime mover. He giveth sustenance in plenty to whomsoever he willeth. God created us rich. Every religion and potent philosophy in history teaches us how to tap into that heavenly storehouse. For thousands of years we have been told, Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Wealth is our birthright. It is the true nature of human beings. It is our destiny. It is a divine and wonderful gift, a gift so beautiful that it comes without effort. It is a gift that comes by means over which we have no control. This is a wealth that is good for all concerned. We must never feel guilty for receiving what God has given us. How can God give us anything that would be hurtful to others? It is not possible. God is all good. In fact, good and God are practically the same word. The universe is perfect in its design. We cannot receive from God anything but good. All we have to do is ask, and the wealth of the universe is at our fingertips. A wealth filled with happiness and joy, with fulfillment and satisfaction. A wealth we can share without loss. A wealth in every sense of the word. And perhaps, most important, a wealth which comes from sources beyond our control. This is not a wealth we earn, achieve, accomplish, affect, procure, win or secure by our own doing in any way whatsoever. This wealth is truly a gift from the all-encompassing power and might of the eternal forces of the universe. Moreover, it is your birthright. You do not have to believe in religion or ancient philosophies to receive this wealth. It is yours for the asking. Put away your fears. Open your heart, and receive your rightful share. I will show you how to ask. It is really quite simple. So lean back and enjoy getting rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 4. Ouch. The morning after meeting Marilyn I went to work in the new offices I had leased the month before. Leasing the offices had been a huge step for me. Committing to a year's lease, knowing I had to make my little business grow just to survive. You can imagine how I felt when my one and only client called at 10.03 AM to say he would no longer be doing any work with me. He had decided over the weekend that his marketing was costing him too much money. I went from struggling to survive to stepping into the jaws of death in one short phone call. If I knew then what I know now, the next few months would not have been nearly so painful. I would have understood the process I was going through. I would have known what to do. But I did not know then. I had the chance to know, and I turned it down. What I chose instead was the pain of going it alone. 
me and my empty offices against the world. Believe me, rugged individualism is a much overrated philosophy. My thrill of victory was scraping together enough to pay the bills one more month. Today, I know that when God closes a door, he also opens a window. All I needed to do was look for the open window, but I did not know that then. Then, I retreated. I wasted two precious weeks pretending nothing happened. Then, after my wife threatened me with a fate worse than death, I called an old friend for a job. I worked for John when I first came to California, and since then, whenever I needed a job, he was there for me. John took me in on the spot and got me back on track feeling like a salesman again. As it turned out, I only worked for him for a month, but I sure needed his help. Thank you, John. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if I had accepted my message that August evening when I first met Marilyn. Of course, I'll never know. Once lost, a moment is gone forever. What I do know is a few months later I had accepted a position selling advertising in a fledgling internet business. It was a business full of potential, as so many are. I, however, got paid on commissions only. No salary. No draw. I even had to pay my own office expenses, including considerable phone bills. That is when my wife, God bless her soul, went to a baby shower for Lisa at Marilyn's house. Diane came back with a message from Marilyn. Tell Tom he needs to come and see me. I can triple his commissions. Triple my commissions. Oh, how that woman talks. Chapter 5. Welcome to Marilyn's place. It was mid-January before I finally had the nerve to call Marilyn. Five months after we first met and one month since Diane had gone to the shower for Lisa. I really felt foolish. What could Marilyn possibly tell me that would triple my commissions? I have been a salesman most of my life. I am good at it. Though, until now, I never sustained a high level of income for any length of time. I have been to more motivational seminars than I care to think about. I have read more books and listened to more tapes than anyone should. I know the best time to close is all the time. I know to think myself rich. I know to visualize myself making the sale. I know how to sell. I work hard at it. I am from Nebraska for crying out loud. All they know is hard work and football. What could Marilyn possibly tell me that I didn't already know? Nothing. That was the first thing she said. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know. But when you leave here you'll know how to do it. Do what? I asked. Get what you want, she replied. Then she asked the question I had not asked myself in a long time. What do you want? Well, I want to get rich, I said quickly. She handed me a nickel and said, here, now you're richer than you were when you came in. I smiled and said, I want to be really rich. She said, why? Well, so I can buy the things I really want. Oh, you want things. What things? Okay, I want a new car. I want a new house. I want a new refrigerator. Write it down. She said as she spread several 79 cent, wide ruled, spiral notebooks on the table for me to choose from. I took the purple one, opened it and started writing. I want a new car. I want a new house. I want... Dot, dot. She stopped me and said, if you write it that way, you will always want a new car, but you will never have one. She went on to show me exactly how to ask for what I want. She explained why it works and I am going to share that with you shortly. First, I need to set the stage again. You really need to feel the power and the excitement I felt that day. Yes, I could tell you the mechanics right now and you could write down everything you want. And if it doesn't work, who are you going to blame? Certainly not yourself. You'll blame me. Well, I want you to succeed. I want to give you everything you need to become rich beyond your wildest dreams. So bear with me. We are going to set the stage. Imagine a beautiful spring afternoon, flowers in bloom, birds chirping, the sun shining and a warm breeze blowing. 
a typical January afternoon in Southern California. I parked in the circular drive, walked through a white trellis covered with jasmine and knocked on the already open front door. Marilyn called for me to come in, then asked me to leave my shoes by the front door. She said she wasn't as worried about dirt on her white carpets as she was about the energy the shoes might hold. Inside, I was immediately struck by the peaceful, loving atmosphere. A ficus tree by the front door was strung with white Christmas lights. A large piece of polished rose quartz sat on the kitchen bar. A large display cabinet held knickknacks and many beautiful rocks. I even saw a Sioux PLE of stuffed animals and several dolphin figurines. Nearby sat a candy bar with her great-grandson's name printed on the wrapper. I had entered a sanctuary. I could not imagine an angry word ever uttered within these walls. I felt safe and protected, relaxed and comfortable. A far cry from the hustle and bustle of my life. No children lived here, yet there was a youthful energy that permeated my whole being. A strong, powerful force that told me Marilyn was a person of ACT on. Someone I would respect. Someone I would trust. I have known some powerful people in my life, but this little lady from Chicago takes the cake. I am and will always be proud to know her. She never speaks unkindly of anyone. She only talks about positive things. She does not harbor prejudice or malice against anyone or any group. She is no religion and she is all religions. Now, I'll teach you what she taught me. The secrets that will make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. Second Law of Prosperity Never, never, never ask for money. Most of my life I thought I would be rich, someday. Someday I would have millions of dollars. Someday I would have a vault full of money just like Scrooge McDuck. I would count it and swim in it and, well, someday never came. It always seemed so easy in my imagination. In an age when the average professional basketball player makes $2.5 million a year I always thought a smart guy like me could scrounge up a measly million dollars here and there. Maybe win a lotto or two. It can't be that hard. Somebody has to win, why not me? Yet year after year, I struggled to make a living. If I had only known then what I am going to tell you now. Never, never, never ask for money. My number one mistake was asking for money. Big mistake. Huge. Money is too vague a concept. Money cannot define your rich life. Money is really nothing more than a medium of exchange. Money comes and goes. Sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't. But whether you have money or not, your life continues. The important thing is that you design a life that leaves you fulfilled and happy regardless of whether you have money or not. When you ask for money you are not really asking for anything useful, and the universe loves to make that very clear. You could, for example, ask for a truckload of money and end up with a truckload of those pens that are filled with chopped up old $100 bills. Probably not what you had in mind. But since there is no universal means of exchange, no universal money, who knows what you will get. Are you asking for marks, yen, dollars, pesos? Do you want this money to be counterfeit? Do you want marked bills from a bank robbery? Do you want play money from a board game? Exactly what kind of money are you asking for? There's always a loophole when it comes to money. A friend of ours, Eva, ignored this advice when she started doing this system. She said she knew she shouldn't ask for money, but she wanted desperately to hold $50,000 in her hand, so she asked anyway. A week later, her mouth dropped to the floor when she opened her mail and took out a check made out to her in the amount of $52,532.69. You can imagine her excitement. In one week, this incredible system had delivered to her door more than $50,000 US dollars. It wasn't some advertising trick. This was real money. Money she could spend on DIN NERS, travel, clothing, cars. Oh, and she knew exactly which car she would get, too. One of those Lexus sports cars with a push button that folds the hard top into the trunk in 15 seconds. How she would spend her free money. 
Finally Eva calmed down and took a closer look at the check. It was her 401k retirement money. It was supposed to be rolled into an IRA, but the financial institution made a mistake and sent the money to her. Eva got exactly what she asked for. She got to hold a check for $50,000 in her hand. But she couldn't spend it. And now she had to get on the phone and figure out how to get this money into her IRA without paying penal ties. The universe will give you what you ask for. It's just that money is nothing to ask for. You can ask for gold, because gold is a mineral, it is something real. It can be made into jewelry, teeth, ignition points on a Rolls Royce or even coins of exchange. It is something intrinsic in itself. God wants us to have a beautiful, safe home, a strong, reliable car, success in business, golden gems, a caring love relationship, and a happy family. Ask for those things and the universe will provide them for you. Ask for money and you befuddle your request. God has absolutely no need for money, so you have absolutely no need to ask for it. Let's say you ask for a car. Someone could leave you the exact car you want in their will. This requires no money. It only requires that you accept the bequest. You could win a car in a contest. No money needed. I have seen contests where you could win your dream house. You get the prop early free and clear. No money needed. God is your provider. All your good comes from God, and he does not need money. In fact, when you ask for money you are asking to take the provider role. The universe provides your good by means over which you have no control. When you ask for money, you are asking to control the means of your success. That would take God out of the equation. And it would eliminate the tests that lead to your spiritual growth. Since the whole point of this life is for you to grow, never, never, never ask for money. If you want a car, a house, a new dress, a fancy leaded glass lamp, someone to love, a steady income. This is not money, it is a means of support, a family, a new pair of shoes. No matter what you want, you may have it. God will provide. Ask the Creator to create, then get out of the way. The first step in getting rich is to know what you want. If you do not know what you want, you had better figure it out. Because if you do not know what you want, that is exactly what you will get, nothing. Ask specifically for what you want. God will provide it by the means he sees best. These are means over which we have no control and it may indeed involve dollars or pesos or yen. The important thing to remember is that the means are not your business nor are they under your control. They are God's means, he is doing the creating. Many years ago I went bankrupt in the real estate Boosie Ness in Houston, Texas. I lost several properties. I lost my self-confidence, I lost my self-respect and, eventually, I left my home to live with my wife's sister, her husband and their two-year-old daughter in a small house in southeast Ern, New Mexico. My family of five showed up on their doorstep with a thousand dollars we had garnered from selling 12 years of accumulated goods sold everything. The king-size bed, the couches, the Queen Anne chairs, the toaster oven, even my collection of prized Beatles albums. I had no job and, together, we had eight mouths to feed. I soon learned about God's providing for us by means over which we have no control. The week before we arrived, Cindy, my beautiful and creative sister-in-law, gave a $1 donation to a 4-H group at the county fair. The 4-H girl filled out a raffle ticket for Cindy's gift. Cindy doesn't believe in gambling of any kind and was in a bit of a dilemma when she won a side of beef. The girl said that if she didn't take the food someone else would get it, because they had to give the beef away. Cindy took the meat, and our combined family ate well during our two-month stay. If you want to be rich, forget the money and go for the power. The power to draw to you what you want when you want it. The secret to this power was waiting for me at Marilyn's house that January morning. Come with me and learn the secret to getting rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 6. Prepare Yourself. As I slipped off my shoes and fell into the comfort and security of Marilyn's home, 
I found myself strangely transformed. My defenses relaxed. I knew instantly that I had nothing to fear in her home. No bill collector would call. No one would reject me. I was safe. I was totally and completely protected, even without my shoes. I have learned a great deal from Maryland. None of it, of course, was anything I did not already know. Truth is utter NAL. And many have tapped into its beauty and power. It's in our music and our literature. It's in the teachings of the founders of the world's religions. It is everywhere. It permeates our very existence. On some level we all know the truth. Once you hear it, a bell rings and you know. You know the truth. You have known it forever. Now, it is my turn to teach. I will unfold for you these same secrets to creating wealth that Marilyn taught me. Please remember, you did not hear this from me first. You are about to begin a journey. Let us go then, you and I, to a special place in the forest of our minds, where you are safe and relaxed. Open and ready to join a very elite club of extremely wealthy people. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes and take a moment to prepare yourself. Atmosphere is very important. If you are reading this with kids yelling or at work when you are pressured to do other things like look busy, wait. Wait until you are in a quiet and receptive state. The universe will give you all the time you need. Okay. First we are going to talk about the power of your mind. You have no clue how powerful you are. None whatsoever. And whatever power you do attribute to your mind is probably wrong. At least it was for me. I was convinced that I could do anything I set my mind to. But the truth is I went bankrupt twice. I couldn't do anything I set my mind to. I certainly couldn't get rich just by setting my mind to it. Now, I know I do nothing special and yet I get everything I want. Marilyn mentioned this concept to me early on, as I offer it to you. I didn't understand it at first. I mean, what happened to putting your nose to the grindstone? Earning your living by the sweat of your brow? The answer is, grinding and sweating are not the keys to SUCSS. We'll tell you what those keys are later. Now it's time to talk about the power of thought. The power of thought is beyond our imagination. Yes, we know that everything humans have ever created began with a thought. But it goes beyond that. Way beyond that. We actually create our own reality.